But we have to start by reflecting on the life and impact of investing legend Charlie Munger. Warren Buffett's longtime business partner and the vice chair of Berkshire Hathaway, indeed here on set, is someone who has observed Munger at many meetings and is a legendary investor himself, Mario Gabelli, the chair and CEO of Gamco Investors. We and we all brought we got the almanac here. You've got it. I got a copy of it. Yeah. Nice to be here, Kelly Dom is here in person. Is... I feel like uh, that guy Tom Hanks and Castro is back yes. on set here. After... I love it. I love the fact that you have the original almanac right there. Well, we have it, but it was a gift uh, in 2009 from someone. Yeah, it's uh, it's going for it. So I, I brought in, I do have a copy, but um, my cat attacked it a couple years ago. So I don't think I could sell it for the $75 it's going for That's not the same as my days. dog ate my homework. Right? Yeah, I know. It's a similar. It's just one of those small things in well, life. Well, what happened is that I met Warren because I knew of Warren because when I went to study under Graham and Dodd, Roger Murray succeeded him at Columbia. Warren had studied under Ben Graham. Then he covered and owned a piece of a company in New York City called Pinkerton's. Mm -hmm. And I followed the detective agency companies, Wackenhut, Pinkerton's, and Burns. And so you learned about what he did about taxes. You learned about what he did about cash flow. And then fast forward somewhere around a quarter of a century ago, not that long ago, 25 years ago, uh, I would be invited to the annual meetings by Alice Schroeder. Mm -hmm. And then when she was no longer doing it, we've been doing that for 15 years. So I actually found one of the cards as a, a shareholder. You can but hold it up again. I did not. I did not. Uh, I did not buy the shares of Berkshire Hathaway for clients until we had an o our open end fund, which was started somewhere in the mid '80s. Wow. So we bought it at three thousand dollars, and we have done significantly well. But what the lessons from Charlie was that when you go to the meetings, when you go to the meetings, what happens is that they have a little cartoon video. Mm -hmm. But Charlie's always in one of those. So it's always an interesting scene that he sets. And then the second part is obviously when Warren goes around after the business part, they ask questions. And the audience asks questions and occasionally Warren would turn around, Charlie, do you have anything to add? And then he would say something very crypt and interesting. Yeah. So sometimes you'd also say, I have nothing to add. So what you mentioned, obviously, you've been shareholders or on behalf of clients since the 80s. Uh, any any moves you'd make with Berkshire? I mean, they, they haven't obviously been as active in recent years. They've been doing a lot more with their investment managers and the deputies now and things like that. Um, well, they bought a company that we owned uh, that was quite important in the insurance business. And uh, that was about eight or nine or ten billion dollars. I kind of forget. But when you look at the portfolio, when you look at the portfolio, and you say, okay, there's 1.4 million shares of Berkshire that sells for $550,000. And what is it going to have as book value next year? We think it's going to be higher than that, wow. higher than the 550000 But Apple is extraordinary interest. Mm -hmm. Here's a guy that maybe would have, before Charlie, he would say, you know, tech, ah, C's candy was high tech to Warren. Uh, or or the, uh, uh, the blue chip stamps, or the, green, or the stamp book that they had. Uh, but independent of that, that is a, a significant amount of value in the company. So now you're Warren and you know that the way to make money is to, that, you know, they've adopted is a good business, good management and a reasonable price. And so instead of buying something that you can liquidate and make money, like the old story of a cigar butt, mm -hmm. that is buy it and then liquidate it to get the cash back, among other things, uh, that's what he did. Has that Char changed? Charlie had a great sense of humor. What, has it informed your investment? We talked about how sort of what you did way back when. But as as Berkshire has evolved, do you think a lot of the people who follow the Ben Graham and the value investing, do you think they've evolved as well? Well, there's no question that basically when I was started, when Ch when Warren started, he'd have to go to Washington, D.C. to go to the SEC files to get data. I, when I started, you'd go to the New York Stock Exchange, you get microfish. Today, you're in the future, you're going to gather data with AI. So gathering the data is going to become different. The second part is that, you, you know, if I went on and looked about what Kelly Evans has done, what's the history and so on, or Dom, I, yeah, I would have to double check it. We've done that before. I've asked for speeches to be prepared, for example, the governor of... Uh, Nevada, uh, he's now the C uh, president of UNR. And so you have, there's a lot of facts that need to be checked. Mm -hmm. But over time, that's going to evolve. Yeah. The second part is how do you handle the value of a franchise, which is the goodwill or the value of a business on the books? That has historically now was part of Ben Graham. And so you evolve certain type of dynamics. Yeah. So 
We've got some headlines coming out. We're going to go from the microeconomic